Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Michigan. I'm here to present the paper "Data Work in Education: Enacting and Negotiating Care and Control in Teachers' Use of Data-Driven Classroom Surveillance Technology." This paper was co-authored by Tawana Dillon, Gabby Marku, and Mark Ackerman. Datafications promise lies in its ability to measure, capture, and represent complex social realities in quantified terms for generating insights and knowledge of one's social life. School systems have become a natural site for datafication. Schools and classrooms have become data platforms where a wide range of data tracking, sensing, and analytics tools are being deployed. With the growing datafication in education, key aspects of schools and teaching practices have been mediated and driven by data. This is to say, datafication in education has reconfigured the practices and relationships among actors, including students, teachers. Parents, school administrators, and more. Datafication in education actually generates new and predominantly unarticulated forms of data work for these actors, especially teachers. In this work, we consider data work as any human activity related to creating, collecting, managing, curating, analyzing, interpreting, and communicating data that consists of. Necessary forms of technological, analytical, and emotional work that makes data meaningful. Data work has become an essential part of teachers' practices. Teachers have to engage with a large amount of data, ranging from student test scores to embodied behavior data to inform pedagogical decisions and everyday teaching practices. In this light, past CSW literature suggests that datafication often leads to the erosion of autonomy in data practices, and the critical education literature has similarly cautioned us that teachers are becoming partly robotized, where their subjectivity and discretion are displaced to data and data-driven technologies. Caring is a central part of teachers' identity. Caring for children involves teaching teachers emotional commitment and often consists of a wide range of mundane practices and embodied feelings. Yet, caring for students' behavior development and controlling for students' conduct in the classroom are often conflated in the classroom environment. In fact, we also see that this conflation of care and control into the surveillance technologies. Leon has cautioned us how surveillance for control is often legitimized and justified through the name of care. Moreover, this feminist,、uh, the feminist and critical education literature has cautioned us the, politic, the politics of care and the gender logics embedded in caring and teaching as a profession. In the U.S., over eighty percent of public school teachers were are women. Teachers' work has been naturalized as women's work because it allows women to effortlessly do na natural. And quasi maternal caring. On this note, our work attends to the intersection of politics of data work and care work, and the question of who is doing the caring work and how datafication reshapes the nature of care work. Together, we look into two research questions. First, what types of data work are performed by teachers, and how do they enact them? Second, how is teachers' data work shaped by and shaping their relations with other educational ed actors? We look into one of the most popular digital interventions for classroom management on the market, Class Dojo. Class Dojo is a software that teachers can use on their phones, tablets, and laptops in the classroom. It allows teachers to tokenize desired and undesired behavior categories in the classroom and assign points to each behavior category. Teachers can reward points to or take points away from students by manually documenting students' conduct in the class. Teachers can view the whole class and individual students' behavior report in a specific time frame as donut charts. Class Dojo also provides audio and visual feedback to students' behaviors. Desired behaviors are color coded in green, and undesired behaviors are color coded in red. Through in-depth interviews with 20 teachers working with children from kindergarten to grade eight, our work locates two salient forms of data working education. For the purpose of this presentation, we unpack teachers' negotiation of visibility and autonomy undertaking these two forms of data work. First, data work as recontextualizing meanings of data points. Students' behavior data and data-driven technologies do not automatically provide care themselves. To enact care, teachers had to take had to take. On labor of data work to reconstruct complex student bodies, needs, and the experiences that have been reduced into behavior data. For example, 
A third grade teacher describes sitting down with students to make sense and reflect on behavior data at the end of each week so that she was able to dedicate resources and support in the appropriate way, be it looking into the children's the child's food insecurity at home or addressing the argument between the students. Another first grade teacher describes spending time with students to understand the potential socio-emotional underpinnings of each negative data points. Of course, we have to acknowledge that this recontextualization is still partial and often biased. However, what we want to highlight here is that this data work as, as recontextualization relies on teachers' situated knowledge, expertise, and past experiences. It is not coded by data-driven technologies, but often rendered into the logic of the data as care regime. Data work as recontextualization in this case makes space for teachers to reclaim and negotiate autonomy and discretion in when, what, and how to care. We argue that this data work as recontextualization is critical to what past ACW researchers have called for shifting from data as care to caring through data. And finally, we highlight that overlooking such form of data work risks naturalizing data workers' situated knowledge and discretion. Data work as recontextualization thus aligns with what CSW researchers have described as invisible reproductive labor. We argue that such data work could further complicate teachers' already invisible care work and perpetuate a discourse that blurs teachers' labor and effect as part of women's work and moral orientation. Next, we turn to the second kind of data work. Data work as resisting surveilling, surveilling gazes from educational actors. Systems like Class Dojo breaks the temporal and spatial enclosure and blurs the boundary among multiple surveillance sites, including classroom, family, and workplace. We find that student behavior data, student behavior data collected by teachers have become the signifier of teachers' performance on whether they're taking professional and good care and control in the classroom. This is to say, teachers' control and care through class dojo behind the classroom door is now visible to parents, school administrators, and students themselves. In this slide, teachers' use of class dojo is conditioned by pressure from parents and families, constraints from schools and districts, and the pu pushback from students. And teachers' care and control become hyper-visible and conditioned to the disciplinary power imposed by this surveillance. As a result, teachers manipulate data points to resist surveillance cases and discursive expectations on caring and controlling practices. For example, some teachers decided to remove all parents from class dojo to remain the relative enclosure of the classroom space. Some teachers would choose to intensify their data collection on students and they consider student behavior data as the evidence to justify their due diligence to different stakeholders. In these cases, Data work as resistance makes space for teachers to manipulate the visibility to reclaim their autonomy and leg legitimacy in the caring processes from civilian cases. What is important here is teachers' ongoing negotiation between caring for the surveillance that is doing what is expected from institutions and caring for students that is doing what they consider is the best for children. Data work as resistance here is not so much of a process that completely dismantles the discursive practices and power over teachers. Instead, it is improv improvisational and complicit. This understanding of data work as resistance calls attention to a process of how the data representation as boundary object between surveillance and surveilled was crafted, what kinds of negotiation, judgment, and power interplay are embodied in the construction of data representation, and how boundaries between surveillance and the surveilled are being probed and pressed in this process. Our work highlights that data work is not always without autonomy. Instead, it consists of a potential to rethink resistance in light of identification. This way, our work adds nuances to the notion that teachers have become partially robotized by data and data-driven technologies. Even though it is hard to say how much data work as recontextualization and resistance can bring about change and shift discursive practices, we argue it is critical for CSW to recognize and advocate for informal data workers' agency and potential of negotiation. Otherwise, overlooking this ongoing negotiation of autonomy in data work risks further foreclosing the room for resistance 
instance and rendering the value agency further invisible. Thank you. Please refer to our paper for more details.